separate the components of a mixture based upon the differences in their physical properties. I've got some examples to show you here. Ah, right here first up. I got some water and I got my keys. I didn't mean to do that. I dropped my keys in the water. I got a mixture now. Hmm. How do you propose I separate the components of this mixture? Well, you see, I know that the uh, water is a liquid and the keys are solid and there are differences in physical properties there. I should be able to just pass the water through my fingers and the keys will get caught behind. Yeah, I did it. Get it? I separated these components based upon the differences in their physical properties. Ah, look what we have here. This is some nickel and tin. Let's see, I got the two together side by side. What if I were to accidentally mix them up like this? Oh man, it might take me a long time to just go and pick each one out. A quicker way to do it would be to separate based upon, you got it, the differences in their physical properties. I happen to know that nickel is attracted to a magnet and tin is not. Hey, there's a difference. Okay, and being attracted to a magnet is a physical property. Hmm, watch. <laughs> Tin's left behind, nickel's up here. Check that out. Yeah, that's right. Nickel's one of the few metals that is actually attracted to a magnet. Hmm, I wonder if I were to take uh, this nickel and put it to here, if it would. <gasps> Oh, gee. Evidence would suggest this isn't made out of pure nickel. Hmm. Oh, I got some more to show you. How about we take uh, a penny, all right? A penny turns out to be a mixture of zinc and copper. And we can separate those two based upon the differences in physical properties. Turns out zinc has a lower melting point than does the copper. So what I should be able to do is apply heat to the penny. And maybe cause the zinc to melt. And as it melts, it becomes a liquid. And the copper won't melt, it remains as a solid. Liquid and solid, just like with my keys, right? And this is for our education. I can see some blistering occurring, telling me. Got it down here. There you go. The zinc. How'd I do that? I separated based upon differences in physical properties. The melting point. How about one more? In here, I've got what's called liquid nitrogen. This might look like water, but it's not water. It's very, very cold nitrogen. And when you get it cold enough, it becomes a liquid. And sure enough, what happens when you take water and you put it on a hot skillet? The water beads and bubbles like that. Well, this tablecloth right here is just like a hot skillet to that nitrogen. And sure enough, what's it doing? It's boiling. Now, what I can do, which is extra special, is take a can and fill this can with this cold liquid nitrogen. Let me take it from here. And let me ask you what happens when you take a, a can of uh, soda out of the refrigerator on a humid day. When it's real humid outside, you have the water vapor that's in the air, and the water vapor will condense on the cold can. And the water vapor is, water vapor is being separated from the mixture of the air because of the, its physical property. Now, that's 
water vapor condensing. If you get it really, really cold, you can get the oxygen, not the water vapor, but the oxygen that's in the air to condense on the can. It's filled with liquid nitrogen, which has a boiling temperature of 77 Kelvin. And oxygen has a boiling temperature of 90 Kelvin. And there's a difference there. And what that means is, if you think about it hard, is that the oxygen in the atmosphere condenses onto the can selectively from the nitrogen, which remains a gas at a temperature above 77. And we have these drops. The drops coming down here, which you can probably hear clicking onto the table, are drops of liquid oxygen. You can take a, a closer look. So those drops you hear are drops of liquid oxygen that are condensing onto the super cold can directly from the atmosphere. What are we doing here? We're separating the components of a mixture based upon the differences in their physical properties. Good chemistry to you.